Hello, welcome back. In this segment, I will talk about the XBE function, which helps us to execute other binaries. For example, in this case, we will execute the bin sh shell from our main function. Okay. Uh, all we are doing is we are just calling the XVE function, which is defined in libc somewhere. We don't have to care exactly where it is. And uh, bin sh is passed as the first argument. The second argument is actually an array of char pointers. Okay, each um, entry in that array is an address. Okay, so by convention, the first or zeroth index element matches the, the string that we put in for this particular shell variable. That is the reason you would see bin sh here and bin sh here, two places, the same value. Okay, and it also must end with null. Okay, and the enrollment pointers are a bunch of uh, key value pairs. We don't care so much in this uh, segment, therefore, I put it to null. Okay. All right, so this is how you would call the XVE function. And uh, interestingly, XVE function will not return un unless something is wrong. So this line will not even execute unless XVE run into some problems, okay? So it's essentially replacing this main function by a new program, that program is bin as such, run it. You can see a shell is spawned now. I have a new shell prompt, right? Earlier I had this different shell prompt. Now I have a new shell prompt, okay? And we can actually type in commands like person working directory, who am I, and all those things, okay? And then we can uh, exit this shell to go back to the parent shell. Okay, now we are the parent shell. So how did this happen? This happened because we were able to call bin sh, right? We are calling bin sh, bin sh using the xve command, okay? So we know how to spawn a shell using XVE. Let's look at the assembly code and see whether we can uh, look at the machine code and extract the machine code from this. Okay, we can do gdb minus quiet XVE demo. And this disassemble the main. It's going to be long, but I will show you the most important ones for now. Where is XVE getting called? Here it is, this call to XVE, okay. So if you scroll up a little bit, you would see some hard coded numbers like 8048520. Z, uh, we can copy this and look at, let's say 10 bytes. What you're seeing here is slash B I N slash S H. That means our string is stored at this location. That means we have a hard coded address. Okay, which also means we cannot use this shell code as part of other machines if you wanted to attack in the context of buffer overflow, for example, and look at 30 lines after the main function is declared. Okay, here it is. You see here, here is our call to XVE in our main function. <clears throat> but if you scroll up a little bit, you see hot coded addresses, right? This is hard coded address. We can't use shell code. Suppose I copy and paste this whole thing. What I mean by whole thing is this, um, everything that is over here. We also have a hard coded address, for example, this one is hard coded. You cannot use hard coded addresses across multiple machines. So we need shell code that is machine independent, meaning address independent, okay. So in the next segment, I will show you how to write a machine independent shell code, meaning there are no hard coded addresses, no null bytes. All right, that's all.